The love of God has been poured into our hearts through the gift of the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Happy Pentecost. Welcome to worship at Anchorage Presbyterian Church. If you are visiting with us, we welcome you. If you would like to be added to our newsletter list, please email the address below. If you are a member of our church, we encourage you to attend our congregational meeting directly after worship. You should have received the Zoom link in today's email. Let us now share the peace of Christ with one another. So either on our YouTube chat or via text or email, please share the peace of Christ. During this time, especially when the days get long, it is important to remind ourselves that we are not alone. May the peace of Christ be with you. Holy Spirit, Lord and giver of life, in the beginning of time, you moved over the face of the waters. You breathe into every living being the breath of life. Come, Creator Spirit, and renew the whole creation. Holy Spirit, Advocate, Teacher, you speak to us of our Lord and show us the depth of his love. Dwell in us and lead us in the way of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, wind and flame, you fill the disciples with joy and courage, empowering them to preach your word and share your good news. Come, Spirit of power, make us bold witnesses to your redeeming love. Holy Spirit, Lord and giver of life, at the close of the age, all creation will be renewed to sing your praise. Come, Creator Spirit, and make us new creations in Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Holy One, when Christ ascended into heaven to reign with you in power and glory, you sent the Spirit of truth to guide us into the way of Christ. Let your Spirit, our Advocate, guide us still. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, so that in hearing and seeing the gifts of this life, we may know the way to live in thanksgiving, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we claim we have no sin, 
we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Let us pray. Almighty God, you poured your spirit upon the gathered disciples, creating bold tongues, open ears, and a new community of faith. We confess that we try to hold back the force of your spirit among us. We do not listen for your word of grace, speak the good news of your love, or live as people made one in Christ. Have mercy on us, O God. Transform our timid lives by the power of your Spirit, and fill us with a flaming desire to be your faithful people, doing your will for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. The past is finished and gone. Behold, everything has become fresh and new. Brothers and sisters, believe the good news of the gospel. In Christ Jesus, we are forgiven. Having heard the good news of gracious love, let us also hear what love requires of us. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? God has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. Amen. Listen now from the Word of God. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came the sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them and a tongue rested on each of those two. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them the ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native tongue of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, Standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. 
No, he meant what was spoken through the prophet of Joel. In the last days, it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall come, and your young men shall see visions, and your old even upon my both men and In those days, I will pour out my spirit and speak of they And I will show what in the heaven above, the sun, the sun, the the blood, and fire, and smoke. The sun shall be turned dark. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks be to God. After appearing to Mary Magdalene at the empty tomb, Jesus now appears to the disciples who have gathered out of fear and confusion. Despite locked doors, he enters the place that had been sheltering them. John chapter 20, starting at the 19th verse. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jewish authorities. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, 
receive the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. The words are familiar. Peace be with you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Then Jesus breathes on them as he gives the gift of the Holy Spirit, reviving their anxious spirits, giving them peace. In the Pentecost story in Acts, the Spirit appears in flames and wind, the breath of God. When Israel lay decimated, the Spirit of God blew over the dry bones, bringing life. At creation, God breathed into Adam, and his breath became our own. Just as God breathed into every living being the breath of life, the Spirit transforms us and renews us day by day. The Spirit is the gift that fills us with courage, energy, intelligence, imagination, and love. Like our own breath, we often don't think about the Spirit until we need it, when we are feeling lost or alone, when we are troubled or lacking creativity, we pray to the Lord to come. Like our own breath, the gift of the promise of Pentecost is that the Spirit is already there. In my life, when I felt particularly anxious, I have found that it is helpful to focus on my breath as I pray. With a breath prayer, first I choose a short scripture passage. I then breathe in the first part of the text and breathe out with the next. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. I repeat this pattern over and over again. It encourages my nervous system to slow down, to focus on the present moment. I then become less reactive, more receptive to God's presence, who is as close to me as my very breath. The story is told of a woman whose father lay dying in a hospital. It was a gradual, long, drawn-out process. The daughter was exhausted, physically drained, and spiritually depleted. Day after day, she would drive to the hospital to the same parking place. She would sit in her car with her hands on the steering wheel and she would pause. Every time she inhaled, she would say, God's peace. And every time she exhaled, God's presence. Every breath, a prayer. She said she waited until something in her changed. She was receiving the presence of the Holy Spirit to guard her breaking heart and guide her in the practice of her faith. God's presence, God's peace. Sometimes we have to empty ourselves to exhale our pain. Emptied of our anxieties and our fear, we are ready to be filled with peace and the ultimate assurance that only God can give us. When we release our tightly held breath, God's Spirit can fill us with peace. Today I invite you to take time to breathe deeply and pause long enough to notice God's Spirit moving in and around you, giving you life and peace. Breathe on us, breath of God. Fill us with life anew. Breathe on us that we might be filled with the energy of God's love. Connected with the creation throughout time, may we feel surrounded by God's love and filled with God's peace. Amen. <laughs>
with joy for the gift of the Holy Spirit, together let us pray for the well-being of the Church, the world, and all in need, saying, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for the wonder that erupted on the day of Pentecost, for the birth of the Church, for the gifts of amazement and challenge, and for all the witnesses whose lives have been altered by your power alive in our world. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the many peoples of this earth whose visions differ, whose languages offer special insights, whose ways of worship and compassion feed our own, we thank you. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the earth itself, through whose creatures we see your love, and in whose winds we remember the coming of the Spirit. We thank you. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Make us grateful for the confounding experiences the Holy Spirit's presence creates in our lives, for the marvel of the new visions, for the wisdom in prophetic words, and for the prayers of your great High Priest. God, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Today we pray for the families of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and for all families devastated by the untimely death of a child of God. We pray for the people of our community, for those in law enforcement who approach their jobs with dignity and honesty and goodness, and for those investigating these deaths, that their investigations will be swift, thorough, open and honest, and that it will help our communities find ways to address systemic issues. We pray for healing, especially between members of our community and law enforcement, brought about by dialogue, mutual respect, and understanding. We pray that protesters will voice their views freely and openly, but without violence, which only deepens and prolongs injustice. God in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also pray for comfort to all people who are refugees from war and famine, those who are lonely and frightened, ill, imprisoned, homeless, or without work, and those who face death today. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Knowing it is your Holy Spirit who has flowed through your witnesses of ages past. We give you thanks for all the saints who have gone before us. With them and with confidence that you hear our prayers, we commend all for whom we lift our voices, trusting that you give more than we need. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it. Let us return to God a portion of what God has so generously given to us. Today, instead of hearing from one of our local mission partners, we will hear from the Presbyterian Church USA's Pentecost offering. Welcome to Westminster Presbyterian Church, Madison, Wisconsin. My name is Pamela Wilson, and as chair of the mission committee here at Westminster, I've been given the opportunity to share with you how Westminster used their Pentecost funds. We grab the spirit of Pentecost, and not even the pandemic can keep my congregation not excited about this particular special offering. You can use these funds all over the United States. But the nice thing is, is Westminster has been allowed to keep 40% of the funds donated to be used right here for students of need. Westminster grabbed the Pentecost spirit by partnering with the Foundation for Madison Public Schools, Adopt-A-School program, at Thoreau Elementary, approximately one block from our doors here at Westminster. Their greatest need was for snow pants. So we provided 110 pair 
of new snow pants. This satisfied the need of the students to be used at recess time, to get the students to and from school, hopefully more safely and possibly with less absenteeism during the winter months. And no matter where they're living, that warmth followed them. The generous hearts of those at Westminster went out to their community through the Pentecost special offering. Please consider this for 2020. The need has never been greater. Jesus said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always to the close of the age. And now may the grace of Christ attend you, the love of God surround you, the Holy Spirit keep you, that you may live in faith, abound in hope, and grow in love, both now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>